at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. Adonai will protect you from all evil. He will guard your life. Adonai will watch over your coming and your going from this time forth and forevermore. I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of Adonai. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem build us a city joined together. There the tribes go up, the tribes of Adonai, as a testimony of Israel, to praise the name of Adonai, for their thrones for judgment are set up, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be at peace. May there be shalom within your walls, quietness within your palaces. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I now say, shalom be within you. For the sake of the house of Adonai, our God, I will seek your good.
Father, Abba, we pray for all the peoples of the world, Lord, Israel, all the nations around it, our America, and all over the peoples of this earth, that they will know you, Messiah Yeshua. God, we thank you for that. Protect them in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. So it's an honor to be here at the gathering with Pastor White and Shirley. All the family, it's great to have all the guests that are coming to be with us this morning. I love this place. I love to be here. I love to be around the presence of God. And it, this is a special, special place that God has appointed for the end time move of God. It's going to be part of it, Pastor as we have the great, great uh, coming of the Lord in the last days. It's a good time to be alive because we see the Bible fulfilled right in our eyes each and every day. Pray for the peace of Israel. Hamas is already screaming today, uh, let's have a peace plan. Let's have a peace plan. They've already screaming today. So when Israel starts marching down your streets with the tanks, it's time to have a peace plan. Yeah, it's a, it's, you know, not when the rockets are going, but when Israel comes in, it's time for a peace plan. Peace plan, peace plan. <laughs> Somebody say amen to that. <laughs> amen to that. I, I got my book uh, I want you to get. This is my latest, uh, The Blood Still Works. We did the blood book last time, and this is related to that book, but it's got a little bit more. It even got 12 chapters, and I got 12 of the old blood songs in the book so that we, we can get back into war, singing about the blood a little bit in our church services. But th this is a good book, and I want you to get it. It's $20, and the money goes to help us build Bible schools and churches. That's what happens with the proceeds from from the blood book all right if you've been married over 50 years stand up married over 50 one is that it one couple here you go lady you that's a good winner right there that's, that's, a, that's a good winner <laughs> yeah the, the rest of you need to get in line the rest of us need to get in line. Get, get, get in line. We are on Direct TV uh, 267, I believe it is, uh, every Sunday night, 8.30 Eastern, uh, on CTN, and then on uh, Direct TV, Roku, uh, Internet, streaming live. So watch it on your phone so you can, you can get the living word uh, every Sunday night, reaching probably 120 uh, our buddy Sid Roth put us on Middle East TV, so tonight we will be on in Israel. The TV's playing in Israel. We, uh, we'll be playing in Iraq, Iran, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and they want it in English. They don't want it in their language. They want it in English because they want to learn to speak the language, so they want to hear the preaching in English at all times. If you have your Bibles this morning, Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, I'm going to preach this book, The Blood Still Works. The Blood Still Works. Hebrews 9, starting at verse 11. Let's stand, please, for the reading of the Word of God. Hebrews 9, starting at verse 11. But Christ being come as high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats, calves, sheep, but by his own blood he entered once into the Holy of Holies, place for be eternal redemption for us. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Point your hands toward me and pray for me. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to use us this morning for your glory and honor. Save those that need to be saved. Heal those that need to be healed. Mentally, emotionally, physically heal in this place this morning. Bless those who need to be blessed financially so they can become financers of the kingdom of God. Let that happen in the name of Jesus. God, we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Turn around, shake somebody real good, and say amen to that. 
<laughs> I see people actually physically shaking each other. That's good news. Amen to that. Have some special guests I want to introduce to you and let you meet these folks from uh, Carrollton, Georgia, Pastor Debbie Kendrick and her husband, Harvey. Please stand up, Pastor, uh, from Carrollton, Georgia, Pastor Debbie and Harvey. Thank you. How many, uh, it's been seven years, and how many floors did you fall? Seventy feet. He works Georgia Power. He fell off a tower, fell off a part of a tower, fell 70 feet, hit the cement wide open. They covered him up and put him in the ambulance and took him to the hospital said he's dead. And God raised him up. He's a heal man. He's a heal man today. That's been seven, seven years ago. Seven years ago. Upside down he fell. <laughs> yeah. So when he hit, they said, well, uh, he's gone. God had another plan for that family right there. <laughs> that family right there. Uh, from uh, a place called Iquitos, Peru, down in the jungle at the mouth of the Amazon is Clara Gonzalez, her friend Dana, who lives in jo Atlanta, and her friend Iris. They're from, uh, they're from Peru, missionaries. They do a great work in, in, the, in, the, in the Peru area, great churches down there that we go each and every year. We're building a Bible school there as soon as we can put all the funding together to get started with that. Somebody say the blood still works. We live in a day when the church is going through many changes. Our church in America is going through many changes. Uh, some are good, some are bad. Some are, some are topics on the church again. Uh, some of our topics are very important to us, but some are not very important. Some are spiritual and a lot of it is not spiritual. That's what's going on across Canada, Caribbean, all across the United States of America. Some are significant to us. And the reality is in every state all across all the states and in churches this morning, all around the world, but especially the United States, they, they, they don't get excited about church anymore. They don't get excited about the things you and I used to get excited about in the church as we grew up in the church. A lot of people in our church today just simply don't know the Word of God. They don't know, the, they don't, some of them don't even hear the Word of God, every, but some of them don't know the Word of God to know what they're hearing. They get excited about things like, uh, can I win the lottery? Pastor, I remember the day when I would go to the altar and they'd say, will you pray for my son to get saved? He's a drug addict. Will you say my husband to get saved? He's an alcoholic. Well, you, you say for my grandkids to get saved, they're running crazy. Today we get in the altar and I put my hand on their head and they say, I want to win the lottery. Uh, when I get a new house, uh, may, hey, I pray that I get a new house debt free. It says it in the altar right now. That's what they, a lot of people say in the altar. They, they, the kids can go to somewhere, but get me a new house. It happens all the time. It happens all the time across this nation we live in. Most of the churches today do not know the word. They don't memorize the word, don't remember the word, don't say the word, don't live the word in their lives each and every day. Not talking about this church, talking about churches in America, all across America. They get excited about a new car, a new house, and a financial blessing, but not excited when angels get excited when sinners get saved. Angels get excited when a sinner gets saved. We ought to get excited too. There comes a time you got to step back, step back a little bit and thank God for the things that money cannot buy. Thank God for peace and mercy and grace in your life and goodness. And I thank God I got a great night's sleep last night. I thank God that I can get a good night's sleep. Let me tell you what something right here. We should still get excited about the blood of Jesus, about the blood of Jesus. Yes, it happened at Calvary 2,000 years ago, but the blood still works. The blood still works. You and I are benefactors of the blood. When we as a child of God get under attack, I got a word for you, use the blood. Plead the blood. Put some oil on your feet, walk your house barefooted through your house and plead the blood. Plead the blood of Jesus over every doorway, every window. No demons can come in this house on my property. Plead the blood of Jesus over your job. 
Plead the blood over your family. When a loved one goes astray, sin enters our homes. Satan raises his hand against us. I got a word this morning. Plead the blood. Plead the blood of Jesus. From Genesis to Revelation, it's a production about the blood of the Messiah. The blood of the Messiah. From one chapter to the next, the blood circulates. Verse to verse, there's a trail of blood by Yeshua, Yahweh, that we know as Jesus. There's redemption available for you and me when we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9, one of my favorites. They tell us about the sacrifice systems where the people would bring a sacrifice to the temple area every year on the Day of Atonement. Now, the Combs family had to bring a sacrifice. The White family had to bring a sacrifice. Each of you, family name, had to bring a sacrifice. It was required by the law. That's what they did. You had to bring the sacrifice. Lepers had to bring sacrifices. Sick people had to bring sacrifice. Nobody was left out. You had to bring a sacrifice. That was it. And you had to put your name on it. Around the neck of the sheep was the comb's name. Why? So the high priest would know I brought a sacrifice. They put their name on their sacrifice so the high priest would know white family brought a sacrifice. They put their names on the sacrifice. Lepers came. Sinners came. Mean men came. Mean women came. Everybody came. Everybody came. But let me tell you what they did, Heath. After they gave the sheep and the goat and the bull and the pigeon dove with their name on it to the high priest, they left. Went back home. They went back home mean. They went back home still a leper. They went back home sick. They still robbers and thieves. They still murderers. Didn't matter. They did what they're supposed to do. Bring this. I'm talking about a lot of blood got shed when they did that. And you know how they did it? They start at 9 a.m. They quit at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. You got to remember that. They quit at 3 p.m. You know why they quit at 3 p.m.? You know what the, what the high priest would say at 3 p.m.? Three, le- three words. You know what he'd say? It is finished. That's what he would say. We ain't, cut, we ain't cutting no more throats of these bulls and animals no more. It is finished. If you look at the cross, Pontius Pilate put a name at the top. I-N-R-I. The Jewish alphabet don't use vowels. I, they didn't have a J, so they put I. And the I stood for Yeshua. The N stood for Nazareth. The R is Rex, and Rex stands for King. And since they don't have a J, they put another I at the end that stands for Jews. Look at it. Jesus Nazareth, King Jews. That's what the letter meant. On top of the cross, Pilate put that up there and had it nailed on top of Jesus as Jesus hang on the cross, shedding his blood for me and you. I-N-R-I. It was in Latin, it was in Greek, it was in Aramaic. They put it up there in three languages so everybody could understand it. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Even that day, they knew who he was. Pilate declared it to the world that day, who he was. But when you and I get under the blood because of Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, we come as sinners, but after the day of atonement in our lives, we leave healed, we leave saved, we leave delivered. We don't leave and have to come back and make another one the next time we have a day of atonement because Jesus still saved, Jesus still healed, Jesus still delivers, and Jesus is still King of the Jews today. Somebody give him praise in the house because he's Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. For the remission of our sins, he put our name and says, Tommy, you're saved. I'm looking forward to that day. 
Bulls, goats, sheep, pigeon doves were brought to the high priest. Behind the veil, once a year, the high priest went in to all the sins of Israel. Gallons and gallons and gallons of blood for the covering of sins went on that day. Let me tell you, all this blood covering did not save one soul, deliver one soul. But when Jesus, one drop of that precious blood of Jesus came to save all of us throughout this world. The blood still works. When nothing else will do, say it with me, the blood still works. There's power in the purpose of the blood of Jesus. The Messiah must understood. You must have understood it. You got to teach it. You got to declare it to the world. The blood still works. Communion is the meal that heals. I have a communion kit, a travel kit. I take to the hospitals. I take to the hospice when hospice in the house. Linda and I went to a little place near Tuscaloosa, Alabama to pray for a woman who was dying with cancer. Stage five, if there is such a stage as five, that's how bad she was. Over stage four, she was into stage five. Her daddy called me and we drove to her house. We got to her house late about 7, 7.30 p.m. She's laying on the couch in, the, in, in her den and she's frail, she's sick, she's dying. We gave her communion, we had communion with her. I cursed the cancer and told it to go in Jesus' name. But let me tell you before I get to that part, let me tell you what happened. Behind the couch was her daddy and her mama. They were standing up behind the couch. Linda's sitting on the couch beside the lady's feet, and I'm sitting in a chair beside the lady. And mom and daddy standing behind the couch. So I want agreement. When I pray for somebody like that, I need total agreement. Listen, if, ain't, if your Aunt Grandma or Aunt Susie May, ain't whatever her name is, comes in your hospital room and starts telling you your mama died with it and you're going to die with it, you need to kick her bottom. I'll say bottom, that's nice. You need to kick her bottom right out of that room. You need somebody in agreement in there that's going to say, Jesus is going to show up and heal me. You pay in your room, it's your insurance. Get them out of there. So mama is, I'm going to be nice, Pastor. Mama is a big lady. That's nice. <laughs> so I asked mama, mama, do you agree with me? Do you know without a doubt God's going to heal your daughter right now? You know what she told me? I don't know. You ain't going to tell me I don't know. I just reached up over that couch and touched mama on the side of the cheek real nice, real boom. And the Holy Ghost knocked mama out. All 350 pounds hit the floor like a rocket. Bam! Mama is gone. Doubt has left the room. I look at daddy. This is not a made up preaching story. This is a true story. I look at daddy. His eyes are that big around. He looks at me. He's trembling. And you know what he says to me, Gary? I believe. <laughs> he didn't hit the floor. I asked the woman, what do you want to do for God? See, if you got something to do for God, he just shows up and heals you. I asked the woman, what do you want to do for God? She said, I got two children, eight and 10. I want to raise my kids. I've been married to this guy 20 years. I want to be a good wife. I teach Sunday school at Rock Mountain Lakes Baptist Church right up there to three-year-old kindergartens, and I want to do that again. I said, all right, we're in agreement. Cursed the cancer, told it to go, anointed her with oil, said you shall live and not die. Preached the right life into her life, put my hand on her head and prayed for her and said, I told my wife, Linda, I said, come on, Linda, let's go. God healed her. Next morning, that was Thursday. Friday, she gets up and cooks, husband for, cooks breakfast for her husband. First time in three years. 
Saturday, she works in her rose bushes out in her yard. And Sunday, she teaches three-year-old kindergarten at Rock Mountain Lakes Baptist Church. She's totally healed. She's alive today because the blood still works. The blood still works. You plead the blood. The blood is costly. It's costly. That's the Red Cross today. The blood costs something. Blood cannot be manufactured and only be produced by a human donor. One donation of blood can save the lives of five or 10 people. Sometimes in a car wreck, you gotta have five pints, 10 pints on one patient in a car accident. Every five seconds, somebody needs a a blood transfusion in the United States of America alone, not counting the world. About 30 million blood components are used in the USA on the average month. Components of the blood. The average blood transfusion is about three pints. God sent his only son, Jesus, to complete his assignment. That's what he told Peter, get out of my way, Peter. I got an assignment to do here. Don't talk to me about this and that. I am going to do my assignment. I'm going to the cross. I'm going to sacrifice for the sin. John 3, 16 says it best. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved might be saved. God sent his son, he purchased us by the blood. The blood was costly. The Lamb of God went to that cross for you and me, our children, our grandchildren, our families, because the blood still works. Don't disrespect the cross. The greatest sacrifice in history was on that hill of Golgotha. Why? Because the blood still works today. When I think what the cross did for me, what Jesus did for me on the cross, I pause and I give praise and thank him. It should have been me and you on that cross, but it wasn't. It was Jesus. By the stripes on his back, we're healed. 39 stripes. Why 39? Why not 40? Why not 6? Why not 8? 39 because there's 39 major diseases in the world today, cancer being one of those. Thank God for the blood. It was costly. But God had a purchase plan. We don't need no bulls and goats. We don't need no pigeon doves. We don't need no animal sacrifices anymore. The blood without spot or blemish is Jesus Christ. And he went one time so we could eternally be saved and walk the streets of gold of heaven. In the Old Testament system of sacrifice, you had to come back every year, every year, every year. John 1, 29, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John the Baptist is baptizing. People at the Jordan. John the Baptist is supposed to be the next high priest after his father. John the Baptist wouldn't put up with the system, but the sacrifice and Jesus had to be anointed by the high priest. Had to be. So John the Baptist did it like you're supposed to. And he said it to us, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin. He introduced Jesus to us as the Savior of the world. Jesus dealt with our sin problem once and for all because the blood still works. Tell Satan, tell his demons, tell his imps, I've been purchased, I've been purchased by the blood. I've been saved, I've been covered by the blood. Say it every day, I've been covered by the blood. I am covered by the blood. My family's covered by the blood. I am covered by the blood and God gets the glory and God gets the honor. Listen, praise God, praise him, shout, run, dance, do what you gotta do to give God some praise. And I'm not talking about just here with us, I'm talking about in your house. Listen, I don't listen to no doo-wop on my radio. I don't listen to sports talk on my car radio. Do you think one iota that Coach Saban in Alabama would call me and ask me anything? That's wrong. He, wouldn't, he could care less what I think. <laughs> so I don't have to listen to talk radio. He's going to do what he wants to anyway. But I got I to gotta praise and worship God in that seven-hour drive this afternoon back home. That CD is going to be going. 
at praise and worship. I'm going to get a good comic home CD and listen to it in the car on the way home just so I get good <laughs> preaching in there. I got to shout because the blood still works. My God has redeemed me. He saved me, and I got to praise him. I was healed at age 10. Jesus walked in my hospital room. I've been, I've been in a room with Jesus. He came right into my bed. I was dying with hepatitis C. They called it yellow jaundice in my day. I was dying, and Jesus walked into my hospital room, stood at my bed. I can describe him. I can see him. I can show the handprint, the scars. That's all. I've seen it all, and I got a brand new liver in one second healed by the power of God. So I got to shout it today because the blood still works. It works. It works today. There's a purchase of blood, but there's power in the blood. Somebody say power. I'm talking about wonder-working power. Wonder-working power. There's power in the blood. Wonder-working power. What I'm talking about is not ordinary blood. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. You ought to get excited today about the blood of Jesus. Sacrifice the high priest. Everyone was required. Everyone had to require to bring. When Jesus showed up, the lame and the blind got healed. Lepers got healed. When Jesus healed, leper, when Jesus healed lepers, he just speak to them. By law, he couldn't touch them. By law, he, he came to fulfill the law, but by law, he couldn't reach out. So he just speak the word and they'd be healed. He just send the word. Oh, you don't have to go touch my son. Just say it. <laughs> yeah, I got a son sick over there about eight miles from here. I don't have to go down there. Just say the word. Just say the words. Send the, send the word today to the hospital where your friend and loved one's at today. Just send the word in that room from right here. From right here, send the word. Now let me tell you what I want some of you to do this afternoon. This afternoon when you get home, how many got a blood pressure cup at home? How many got a blood pressure cup? Keep it checked every day. That's good news. <clears throat> I want you to go home today, and I want you to take that blood pressure cup and stick it on your arm. You know how you do it. Put that up here and pump it up. And pump it up real tight. Then I want you to leave it alone. I don't want you to take it off after 30 seconds. When that reading shows up, I don't want you to take it off. I want you to leave it there. I want you to leave it there about five, six, seven, eight, nine minutes. I don't want you to take it, just do it like you normally do every day. I want you to leave it on there. And let me tell you what happens. After three or four minutes, you've got some pain in your arm. <laughs> After four or five minutes, you're screaming, help me, Jesus. Because this thing is hurting. This thing is really hurting. After eight or nine minutes, you're pleading, God, I, you, something's got to happen here. Because there ain't no blood running through your arm. The toxins have taken over. Sin, toxins, have taken over because the blood ain't flowing. Somebody got to read into that. The blood ain't flowing, so the toxins are taking over. After a few minutes, try to pick up a pen to write something. You can't, your fingers ain't working. Try to pick up a hammer and drive a nail. You can't even hold a hammer. Your, your hand is useless because there's no blood flowing through your arm. The muscles are tense. The caterpillar, whatever is, whatever's happening ain't happening no more because the blood has stopped flowing. After about eight or nine minutes of that stuff, you're going to start screaming. I want you to try it when you get home now. Try it. I just told you how good it would be. Just try it. <laughs> then reach over and turn that knob, and it'll go, and it will release. And when it release, guess what happens? The blood begins to flow back into your arm. Now, it's going to take a minute or two for that thing to get right but it's going to get right again. You see, the toxins have taken over. The poisons ain't moving because the blood cleanses your body. 
But that ain't getting cleansed because it ain't moving. But when you release it, the blood flows and cleans the toxins so you can work and do what you're supposed to do. That is Jesus and the blood of Jesus for me and you. The blood of Jesus cleans us and makes us whole and removes the toxins out of our body and removes sin out of our life. And when he removes the sin out of our life, we can do exactly what we're supposed to do. You know why? Because the blood still works. Say it with me. The blood still works. The blood still works. Your muscles tried to work. There was no energy produced. The white blood cells, nothing was going on, but the blood still worth. Are you with me? Sin accumulates in our lives, but only the blood can cleanse it. The blood of Jesus cleanses it. You ache with much pain in your life, can't sleep at night, wonder what's going on. You got to apply the blood to your head every night. Put some oil on your head every night before you go to bed. Say, God, give me a good night's sleep. Prick to me by the blood. Y'all know who Charlotte Elliott is? Most of you do not. I'm going to tell you. 1835 in London, England, Charlotte Elliott. Her brother was a missionary and traveled to nations around the world. And many people got saved. But Charlotte was an invalid. Couldn't walk in a wheelchair. From bed to wheelchair, back to bed. Couldn't walk at all. Crippled from the waist down. But she had a sharp mind. So she began to write poetry. She wanted to be a missionary like her brother. And travel the world. But she couldn't. Simply because of her invalid status. But she could write. And she began to write. Over the years her brother as a missionary had 3,000 people saved. Throughout his ministry. But Charlotte Elliott is still getting people saved today. Today, Charlotte Elliott is still getting people saved because she wrote, just as I am, without one plea. How many people have been saved, Pastor, with that song playing from the pulpit? And they walk to the altar weeping and crying, God, take me just as I am and cleanse me by the blood. Somebody give praise for Charlotte Elliott. Still getting people saved today. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel veins where sinners lose their guilt and shame because the blood still works. The blood still works. The blood was purchased, the blood's costly, the blood cleanses, but the blood can also change us. It can change us from any, separa- any situation. Hebrews told us that. No more bulls and sheep and goats, but the blood of Jesus. Our life is changed because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Cleans your conscience, clean sin out of your life because the blood still works. Under the old sacrifice systems, you would bring the animals, but under the new system that we have, it's on the power of of the blood of Jesus. The blood will change the way you talk, change the way you walk, change the way you do things, change the way you look at the world today, knowing that you're going to heaven. Change the way we look at life. The promise of the blood is for you and for me. It's changed, it cleanses, it's working. It's like an insurance policy, but you don't have to pay a deductible and you don't have to pay no premiums. He just did it for us. Did it for us because we're covered by the blood. And it don't matter if you got a pre-existing condition. <laughs> you get that one. He cleanses no matter what our condition because of the blood. It's a promise for you. And it's a promise for me. If we are saved, we're protected under the blood. If we're saved, we're protected by the blood. On the day, the first day of atonement was Passover, the first Passover, they put the blood on the doorpost. Fifty days later, what happens after Passover 50 days next Sunday? Pentecost. Pentecost. They put the blood on the doorpost in Egypt. 
Fifty days later, Moses is bringing the Ten Commandments off Mount Sinai. That was the first Pentecost. Exactly 50 days later, the first Pentecost took place. How do we survive in this old world? Plead the blood. Plead the blood. Ain't no devil big enough to plead and mess with the blood of Jesus. You got to get that. It cleanses us. It furnishes us. It growth of us. Our tissues are fixed. Our muscles are fixed. Our bones are fixed. Our glands are fixed. Our nerves are fixed. But the blood is not fixed. It's mobile. And it flows through our body. It's not any, like any other fluid in your body. It's not like saliva. It's not like any fluid. It's the blood. It's the blood. It works. It's not like bile. It's not like tears. It's the blood that's flowing through our body. We got about five liters of blood in a normal body, about eight pints, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, and a five is the number of grace. It's the number of grace flowing through our body when we think about the number five. Our heart circulates every 45 seconds. Your blood circulates all the way through your body, all the way through your liver, all the way through your cleansing part of the body, goes back to the heart and starts all over again every 45 seconds. The blood goes through your body and cleanses you. Somebody say 45 seconds. It's feeding us and taking waste away. You got to get that. It's feeding us and it takes waste away. It cleanses us and takes its waste away. Jesus saved us and took our sins away because of the blood. Every 45 seconds, the white blood cells are like warriors. They fight cuts and infection. They prevent things from attacking us. When Satan comes against us, the blood stands up against him and says no. Every 45 seconds. If you'll give me 45 seconds, I'll be back. You might have knocked me down. You might have stepped on me. Devil, you might have pushed me. You might have done this to my family. But you give me 45 seconds and I'm coming back. I'm coming back every 45 seconds. That ain't long. I'm coming back every 45 seconds. You give me 45 seconds, I'll get through this situation, whatever I'm facing today. I'll get through this situation because you just give me 45 seconds and I'll get through it. I'll get through it. I'll get through it. Every 45 seconds, I'll get healed. I may be sick, but you give me 45 seconds this morning. You just give me 45 seconds and I'll get healed this morning. All I need is 45 seconds. I don't need all day, all night next week. I got 45 seconds because the blood reaches to the highest mountain. The blood healed me. The blood kept me. The blood saved me. We got to plead the blood every 45 seconds. Somebody give him praise and glory this morning for the blood. Come on, give him praise and glory. The blood still works. We got a great attorney, an advocate. It's Jesus sitting at the right hand of God pleading the blood for you and me. Now, I don't know about you. But I've been in some court cases where the judge is pretty mean old guy, and he don't like my attorney. And if he don't like my attorney, I'm usually going to lose that case because the judge don't like me and don't like my attorney. Well, guess what? God's the judge, and Jesus is my attorney. I got a pretty good case. I think I'm going to win. My daddy's the judge. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. The blood gives me strength from day to day. And guess what? It will never lose its power. Give God praise this morning. Clap your hands and give God praise for the blood. Oh, stand up and give him praise for the blood. Stand to your feet and give God praise. Plead the blood, plead the blood, plead the blood, plead the blood. Plead the blood, plead the blood. Come on, plead the blood. Woo, yes. Woo, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Plead the blood, plead the blood, plead the blood. somebody 
Ye la ba sha la la ba ki. Ko la la ba ba sha ta la la ba ko la la ba shi ta bo. I ka da la ba chu. I ka ta ya la ba shu ta de de be. Ko da ya la ba wo shu. I ka shu la la ba ki ta ya. If you got it, go ahead. I am forever with you, saith the Lord. I will never forsake you. I am beside you. I am above you. I am below you. I am your protection. I am there for you. There is nothing that can stand in my way from getting to you. There is nothing that can prevent me from stopping the enemy coming against you. I am yours and you are mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Somebody give him praise for that. Shila ba kola, shanda la la ba kaya, kola la ba kaya, ila ba ko shila ba kai. Is there anyone? We're all standing. Is there anyone who'll raise your hand this morning and say, "Tommy, I am not covered by the blood. If I died this afternoon, I don't know if I'd go to heaven or hell. I just don't know." I am confused. The enemy's got me confused. I want to know for sure that I'm covered by the blood. If that's you, slip your hand up and say, you're talking to me. You're talking to me this morning. I, I just don't know if I'm covered. I, I don't know if I'm going to heaven. I want to get it right with God. If anyone will slip your hand up and say, I need you to pray for me this morning. I need you to pray for me this morning. I need to be sure that I'm covered. Anyone, anyone, slip your hand down, put it right back down so I can see it. That's all I want to do is just see your hand in the name of Jesus. Come on, saints, help me pray a little bit about this situation. Someone needs Jesus. Someone needs to be covered by the blood. There's a situation that needs to be covered by the blood. Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.